Hello and welcome to Void Electronics. In today's video I want to show you why you need a series resistor when powering up an LED and how to calculate that resistor. You probably remember that before LEDs we used incandescent lights and they had no issues in being connected directly to a power supply, assuming that the power supply was the right voltage of course. However, if we do the same thing with an LED it will burn out immediately. To understand why this happens, we have to study the current with respect to the voltage through the LED. And one way to do this is to use the curve tracer. The curve tracer here is set up to produce the curve for a simple LED connected to it, and also the curve for an LED with a series resistor. Let's start with a simple LED. Let's increase the voltage to see what happens. And as you can see, the current through the LED is exponential, just like the current described by the Shockley diode equation. So this means that the current through the LED is really hard to control if you have a voltage source. That's because if the voltage is too low, then the LED is completely turned off. And if we increase the voltage just a little bit, the current quickly gets excessive. So the solution to this is to connect a series resistor. As you can see, with a series resistor the characteristic is totally different and the current is no longer exponential. Once the LED starts conducting, as you increase the voltage the current grows in a more linear fashion, which means that the current is a lot easier to control even if we have some variations on the power supply. Let's take a closer look at this. Let me remind you that for a curve tracer the current is on the vertical axis and the voltage is on the horizontal axis. And for this experiment I set the curve tracer to 1 mA per division for the vertical section and 0.5 volts per division for the horizontal section. So you can see that the LED starts conducting at about 1.25 volts and the current grows a lot in just a narrow voltage interval, up to 1.5 volts, the current is already 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, about 9 milliamps. Looking at the LED with series resistor, something a lot different happens. The LED starts conducting at about 1.25 volts once again, but we can increase the voltage a lot and the current still remains reasonable. In our case, the voltage goes all the way up to, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, about 4.5 volts. And the current at 4.5 volts is just 1, 2, 3, about 3 milliamps. So this means that we have a lot of margin here for the voltage and the current will still be reasonable. In order to calculate the series resistor for the LED, the first step is to decide the supply voltage. And in my case, it is 9 volts. The next step is to look at the maximum recommended current for this LED and in my case it is 20 milliamps. Since I want to be safe and have some margin I will use a current of around 15 milliamps. And knowing the current the next step is to look at the IV curve of our LED and to figure out what is the voltage drop of the LED for our current. So a current of 15 milliamps is right around here. And this 15 milliamp horizontal line intersects our graph at around 2.2 volts. So this means that for 15 milliamps we expect a voltage drop of around 2.2 volts. And now that we know that the solution for this is to have a series resistor, we just have to calculate its value. And we do this based on the data that we already have, which is a current of 15 milliamps a supply voltage of 9 volts and the voltage drop across the LED of 2.2 volts. The next step is to draw the schematic, which I do for teaching purposes only. So I start with a 9 volt voltage source, a series resistor and an LED connected like this. And now we know the voltage here, which is 9 volts. And we know the voltage across the LED, which is 2.2. So the next step is to apply Kirchhoff's current load to find the voltage across the resistor. So we can choose an arbitrary direction for our circuit, something like this. And based on Kirchhoff's voltage law, the voltage drop across the resistor is the difference between these two voltages. So it is 9 minus 2.2. So the voltage drop across the resistor is 6.8 volts. 
and knowing this we can use ohm's law to calculate the resistor so r equals vr divided by i r equals 6.8 volts divided by 15 milli and the resistor value is 453.33 ohms now, if you know a thing or two about electronics, you probably know that this weird value of 453.33 ohms is not something that is readily available. So the next step is to approximate it to a standard value that you can actually buy. And to do this, you can simply look up E6 series, E12 series, E24 series or something like that and find the closest value. I will use the E6 series and just multiply these values by 100. And the closest value is 470 ohms. So to build this circuit I will use a breadboard. Let's start with the LED. As you can see the two pins of the LED are not really equal. One of them is longer than the other and the longer one is the anode. This is important because in an LED current flows from anode to cathode so this means that the anode is the positive terminal. So let's put the LED somewhere on the breadboard with some space in between. I will connect it something like this. And now the negative lead from the battery goes to the cathode. Now let's connect the resistor as well. The resistor is connected between the anode. So one terminal goes on the same row as the anode and the other terminal goes to the battery. So I will just go a few rows above and just connect it somewhere at random. And then the positive terminal of the battery goes to the second terminal of the resistor on the same row. And now we can connect the battery to see if our circuit works. So as you can see the circuit works, but now it would be a good idea to check if it works correctly using a multimeter. So with the multimeter configured to measure DC voltages, we can first check the supply voltage, which is about 9 volts. So far so good. Let's check the voltage drop across the LED. And it is very close to 2.2 volts. And you can also check the voltage drop across the resistor, which is about 6.8 volts. And now, just for fun, we can measure the current as well. So I need to reconfigure the meter just a bit. And remember that when you measure current, the ammeter goes in series. So you have to disconnect the battery, connect the positive terminal of the battery to the positive probe of the meter, and take the negative probe and connect it to the second terminal of the resistor. And now we can measure the current, which is really close to 15 milliamps. So this means that this circuit works perfectly. So the idea of this video is to teach you some basic electronic skills. And that's because if you're preparing for a career in electronics, then copy pasting someone else's circuit without knowing what you're doing is not really a solution. So if you're preparing for a career in electronics, you have to know how to calculate things every once in a while. And this is also important because even for such a simple circuit, the series resistor calculated by someone else may not work in your circuit. That's because someone else could use a different LED, a different supply voltage or even a different current for the LED. So that's it for today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're interested in more content related to electronics and programming, please subscribe to this channel because there is more content like this on the way. Bye.